you plug it in, you put a private key in there. Correct. You work with it. And when you're done, you unplug it, private key, everything is erased. Poof. It doesn't it doesn't remember anything about what transactions you've engaged in or what private keys you've used. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of the design. I'm here with Seed Signer. We're going to talk about BTC wallet hardware design. How are you doing today? I'm great. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So I was not able to see your talk because I was here interviewing people. So if you could please uh, refresh our memory. Yeah, yeah. So Seed Signer is a fully open source. Uh, it's really a software project that lets people build with off the shelf parts and commodity hardware a uh, hardware wallet, but it's a unique hardware yeah. wallet. Our differentiator is that it does not remember your private keys. So in computer science terms, it's called a stateless device. So every time you power it on, you need to enter your private keys. So it encourages people to be more hands-on with managing their private keys. But the upside is that you can use it to actually manage multiple wallets and multiple private keys. So it's no longer like one key, one hardware wallet, um, but all open source, uh, yeah. Wow. So how would you, how were you able to achieve uh, the stateless wallet? That was, so my background is in digital forensics and it was uh, technologically kind of an outgrowth of some techniques that we use in the digital forensics world. Um, we use, just to break it down, a very specific version of the Raspberry Pi Zero. So most people are probably familiar with Raspberry Pis from building nodes. Uh, we use a little bit smaller version, still made by the same manufacturer called a Raspberry Pi Zero, and we specifically use a Zero version 1.3. What the 1.3 means is that it does not have any wireless uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth uh, hardware built into it. So it's naturally a very isolated, kind of like little air-gapped computer. And then um, how we manage keys is that uh, the current incarnation of Seed Center is really just Python code that runs on top of a stock Raspberry Pi uh, operating system. But when keys are inputted into the device, we only maintain those as Python variables in memory. We take extra steps to make sure that uh, the key data is not cached to the memory card that's running the, uh, the device. So the keys are just in memory. And when you remove power from the device, like you shut it down and pull the power, that's the nature of computer RAM is that it only holds data or holds state as long as there's power supplied. So when you remove power, the data just goes away. And that's how we uh, wow, are able that's so to be cool. stable. That is really cool. So you plug, you plug it in, you put a private key in there. Correct. You work with it. And when you're done, you unplug it, private key, everything is erased. Poof. It doesn't, it doesn't remember anything about what transactions you've engaged in or what private keys you've used. Yeah. That's, that's the beauty of the design. Okay. Nice. So you store your private keys obviously elsewhere. Correct. And how do you import it into the device when you do? That was tricky. So the first versions of the seed signer were very clumsy where you had to either import 12 or 24 words by manually typing them in with like a, you can think of it like a gaming controller, like a thumbstick and a few buttons. Um, but one of our contributors early on came up with this great idea that instead of having to manually type in the words every time, we could encode people's, uh, people's seed words as a QR code. So they would, when they power the device on, to quickly import their keys to begin working with them, they would just scan a QR code. Um, but we have to be very careful about how we treat those QR codes. Right. And obviously it's not something you're going to print with an online printer or photograph with your mobile phone. So we, we have this whole process where once you input the words, it generates the QR code, and then it will take you through a very manual step-by-step -step process where we have paper templates, on our uh, in our GitHub repo that you can print, and it, it's basically a grid that you use a Sharpie or a different marker. And square by square, I know it sounds cumbersome, but it just takes about five or ten minutes, and you can make a QR version of your seed if that's how you'd prefer to quickly get it into the device. Wow! So would you say that this is for more of the advanced user in Bitcoin? I would not. Um, and and the, the way I would frame that is. Uh, node building, like building a node from a Raspberry Pi, like a standalone, what you could almost call a Bitcoin server, like a very specialized computer 
that just uh, contributes to the network and participates uh, in you know the Bitcoin network. That process of building something like that with a Raspberry Pi initially was a very technical kind of thing. But over time, as the tools got better and the informational materials got better, uh, I think that became a lot more u ubiquitous. And we try really hard with Seed Signer to make it as approachable for less technical Bitcoiners as possible. The most technical part is like maybe building the device. It's the nuts and bolts of getting the right components and getting them together. But once you have the device up and running, it's we put a lot of thought. We had a recent user interface upgrade that was kind of an overhaul that made the interface a lot more graphically driven and revised some of the workflows. So I think working with it, it's very intuitive and approach uh, for most Bitcoiners. Okay. A lot of people may be hearing this and, and asking themselves because we have a, a wide audience of users into this space and they're probably asking themselves, well, why would I have a device that erases my information when I need my information there? What is the purpose of the device if if a if somebody bumps it, you know, it disconnects from electricity, it's all gone? A lot of people may be asking the question that question right now. So if you can please clarify that. Sure, fair enough. So you know, if the, if the electricity gets bumped, um, like you would you would have written down your seed phrase, which is the human representation of your private key, you would have written that down and you would have it. So you just power the device on and re-enter it. But um, to answer your other question about some of the advantages of the device is that because it's stateless, because it doesn't remember your private key, this kind of opens up the possibility of using one device to manage either multiple wallets or multiple co-signers in a multi-sig situation. So I'm uh, telling myself a little bit, I'm a cheapskate. And when I was considering building like a three of five multi-sig. I didn't want to have to buy uh, five hardware wallets just to start experimenting with multi-sig and learning uh, more about it and if I would be able to get comfortable with it. So that's part of how this idea was born. So what if we just had one device that didn't remember private keys? It just creates the necessary signatures that you need to be able to sign with private keys. And that way it's something that you can use, like I said, to manage multiple wallets, but even in some communities and some settings like trusted uh, third parties, close friends and family, they can actually use the same device uh, individually to manage their own kind of like Bitcoin savings. Has there been any other uh, stateless device in Bitcoin history before you? The only one that I'm aware of is uh, if you're familiar with Spectre Desktop, they have a pretty popular um, a wallet coordinator software that is focused on multi-sig as well as uh, people running their own nodes. That's what we call a multi-sig coordinator because it's kind of the tool set that lets you interact uh, in between the protocol and the keys. But so Spectre Wallet has their own do-it-yourself uh, wallet device called a Spectre DIY. You can look it up. There's a great GitHub repo. Um, the people behind that are super sharp. And that was kind of my inspiration. They offer the option to save your key. But I think by default, um, I think by default with that device, it also is stateless. But that's the only other one I'm aware of. Okay, so when you create the wallet on the device, does it automatically give you an old school Bitcoin ad uh, address, a SegWit address, or a Taproot address? No, so it's uh, it operates at a little bit different level of the te tech stack. So first of all, with regard to creating a private key, I call Seed Signer a bring your own entropy device. So we're not gonna try to create a private key based on any kind of random number generator or code that you know computes a private key. We want users to bring entropy, real world entropy um, into the device to create a private key. So what does that mean? Like there are basically three ways right now that we support creating a private key. One is just like you cut the bit words out and you kind of do a lottery system where you pick them out of a hat and you can enter the words that way. We also support taking one or more dice and rolling them either 50 or 99 times to create a 12 or a 24 word private key. Or uh, we also have an onboard camera, obviously in the device that we use for the transaction signing process, but we also leverage that camera to uh, let you take a photo of something in the world around you. And the entropy from that photo, as well as a couple other sources is kind of condensed into a private key. Now, your question was more about, like, how do I set up the wallet after I have this private key? Yeah. And that is, uh, so you, it's it's something that's commonly referred to, I think, as a watch-only wallet, but 
from your private key, you generate what's called an extended public key. And that's just a public version of your private key that I'd classify as private but not secret. And so if you want to set up a multi-sig wallet, you actually need uh, multiple of these extended public keys to put together to make that multi-signature wallet. So we, we don't generate addresses, at least that's not in the current feature set, but we do allow users to create that extended public key that they can feed into a program like Spectre that I mentioned or Sparrow Desktop, not Sparrow Desktop, just Sparrow Wallet is another one. And then there's also a couple mobile coordinators that we support with Blue Wallet being one of those. So you can use any of those with our de device to set up a single SIG or a multi-SIG wallet and actually start receiving and sending Bitcoin. What's in the future for Seed Signer? In the future. So we, we've just got through a big push of upgrading our code structure and our user interface just to make the device look more like something <clears throat> Bitcoin, or excuse me, would buy as opposed to something they would build. It's a much more polished look. It's much more approachable for less technical users, more intuitive workflows. But what's in the future um, on tap uh, that we'd like to work on next, uh, multi-language support is very, very important for us. Um, we have one of our developers was instrumental in Spectre Desktop's uh, development of multi-language support. So getting to support both the interface and seed words um, in other languages is important. And then we're also exploring, excuse me, our, uh, our own custom implementation of an operating system so we can pare down kind of the attack surface and that'll give us some advantages with the hardware itself and uh, larger screen, just kind of like making the user experience better and better as we go. Right on, right on. So are you guys a, a startup or is this just an open source project? This is currently uh, just an open source product. We're kind of bad at giving, we're, we're bad at making money. We give away everything that we uh, come up with. So right now in to GitHub repo, which if you want to Google or DuckDuckGo, if you just do seed signer, those two words both together as one word and GitHub, you'll be able to find our repo. But all of the software, you know, obviously is open source. But actually also uh, 3D printed enclosure design. So to keep all the hardware components together, uh, we have a couple slick designs for 3D printed enclosures. And um, yeah, we, everything's free right now. We'll see what the future brings. Right on. And where can people uh, he, um, learn more about Seed Signer? Absolutely. So just Seed Signer, both those words all together, SeedSigner.com is the best place to start. That has uh, a lot of our resources in terms of past interviews that I've done and kind of like explainer videos. We also have a great uh, independent custody guy that takes people kind of through some of the de design decisions that went into Seed Signer and shows you how to set up a simple two of three multi-sig wallet. Um, but SeedSigner.com and then on Twitter and on Telegram, I'm just also Seed Signer and I'm always happy to uh, get direct messages and, and interact with people. Any last words for the world of Bitcoin? Keep on Bitcoining. All right, man. Bitcoin on. Thank you so much for being with us. Cool. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you.